everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for coming out so early. Um, so, because today's about moments, and obviously, being a photographer, I'm, you know, inherently able to talk about these kinds of subjects. It's really what my life is based off of. But I wanted to start with, like, this is me 21 years ago. As, like, I've been a photographer since I was 14. This is here, I'm 18. And it's really what I've been my entire life, but there's been so many moments through my life as a photographer and now as a filmmaker that when I look back through, I see a thread all the way through. And I think it's really important as creative people and as, as anybody to really sort of be able to see, sometimes, you know, we get a little lost or we get a little, you know, overwhelmed and it's nice if you can like look back and see, oh, I took this step and this step and this step and I always knew which direction I was going. So I think a lot about that. And here are, I was, I was going to show you guys some of the photos that, this is where I started. These are the photos I used to take in the 90s. I used to tour with bands a lot. And um, my mom was a flight attendant and my father was a pilot and I used to be able to fly for free so I got to go a lot of places. I'm, I can't even believe I think about it sometimes. My parents never knew where I was. <laughs> I think back, I'm like, oh my god. And so here, you know, I grew up in this really all boy culture, photographing all these bands. What I really wanted to do was participate and, and be part of this sort of underground music scene that I found. And I, um, I did that by picking up a camera because like I was, I was looking at this picture last night. I, I could count like four girls or like five girls in this place thinking about it. Like it's just all dudes. And this is, I think we're in uh, Columbus, Ohio here at this festival. That's this band, The Promise Ring playing. Um, in, you know, 1990-something. But um, looking back at all these pictures, this is in my basement where I used to have shows as a teenager. Um, this band, I saw Bob, I love them so much. Great t-shirt. Um, and then here, I went, I went from being a teenager, you know, taking all these photos of bands to art school, and in art school, you know, I had access to more. This is obviously all shot on film. This is, but I was looking back at, you know, the pictures that I was taking, what it is I'm attracted to, the stories that I like to tell, and it's always been, for me, about intimacy and, like, trying to make work that is, shows connections through us, and that, because I think in, I've always found that, like, it's kind of lonely being a person in this world, and that if we can see work from other people that makes us feel connected and, op and opens us up and cracks our heart open in some way that it, we're doing a good thing. And so one of the main moments in my life, which I didn't know was a main moment in my life, when I look back is I was hired to photograph this woman on the left. Her name is Michelle Nadeglio Cello. And I probably photographed her in, I'm gonna say maybe 2000. It might have even been 1999, so somewhere around there. And it was one of my first assignments, and it was for Vibe. And this guy, George Pitts, who was the photo director at the time, hired me to do it. I was very lucky that he gave a, you know, took a shot on me. And then on the right is this woman, Rebecca Walker. And she was, they were in a relationship at the time. And Michelle came home from the shoot that day and told Rebecca, hey, I, I met a photographer that I didn't hate, I really liked her, you know, because she really doesn't like to be photographed. And Rebecca then was about to put out her first book, and she then hired me to photograph her for her book. And, and then Rebecca and I stayed friends for years, you know, 14, 15 years. And, and it wasn't, um, I didn't think that much of it, but it's Rebecca who recommended me to the producers of my film, Echo Park. So here I was in this moment, having no idea I was going to be a director, no idea that... Um, it's where my life was going to take me, but it, I can I can trace it back to like George Pitts gave me that assignment. From that assignment, I met Rebecca. Rebecca introduced me to producers and my you know movie posters, and and then my movie played here in this theater, you know, and that's in the Bay Area, right? So it's um, I think it's really nice to sort of reflect on those things because you really can take them back, you know. And then I wanted to show you guys some of the work I was doing when I first got out of college and I was getting assignments because another thing that's happened to me in my life is that I used to get these really rewarding, wonderful editorial assignments that really fed me creatively and I had a lot of freedom. 
And I don't get those assignments so much anymore. You, you, there's a lot less money, and money is time, and so when you get assignments, you need to turn them around really quickly. And it's, not, it's less like, I used to go and just hang out, you know, and have days to spend time with people and take pictures of them, and, and it's a lot, it's not like that anymore. So when I look back on these pictures, I see like how, how much you know, how much time I had and, and how my creative spirit was fed by these assignments I was given that I didn't create for myself. And so what happens later is I hit a lull in my career at some point where, you know, I was no longer being fed creatively by editorial assignments, by advertising assignments. But I had, you know, you get out of school, I started working. I was very lucky to really be a photographer. And... Um, this is an assignment I did for Time Magazine where I spent like five days in Texas photographing cheerleaders. <laughs> like, now they would just hire somebody who was already in Texas to do something in the afternoon, you know. And um, I love these pictures, you know, it was really nice to do that. So, so what I've done now, after hitting a sort of creative wall in my life, was I had to break through it and really realize that I needed to self-assign and, and I'm responsible for my creative life, and I'm responsible for the stories I tell, and I can't depend on other people to hand those to me, you know? And, and I've been much happier ever since I figured that one out. These are all, um, this is in Brazil. I figured out, I, when I go places, I do a lot of travel photography, and I'm always trying to get on top of buildings, because I want to see, I want to have a perspective. So I've broken on like the top of so many buildings and almost got in trouble, but it's always worked out. But this is one where like the security guard was standing there like and telling me in Portuguese to get out of there, and I was like, just hold, it's a long exposure, hold on. I'll be out of here in a second. Actually, like four seconds, you know, so you can see the movement of the water. Um, this is in Turkey. So. Um, this is actually in Gaziantep, which is on the border of Syria. It's like a place you would never want to go now. But this is, I went there and, and spent four days, you know, wandering around Gaziantep doing a story, wondering what I was doing there. And then it really is having the time and, and just being able to um, connect with people. And I mean, I, I don't think, I don't even remember if he spoke English. But, you know, you, you have... It's these wonderful moments where you get to experience life and connect with people, and then, then you know you guys get to see this man who's on the other side of the world. Um, this is in India, in Varanasi, on the um, edge of the Ganges. It looks really pretty. It's not pretty there. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, so again, Ganges, this is, this is not something I did on last time that I was traveling in India, a friend had a wedding, you know? There's, I don't ever, ever leave the house without a camera. I'm never not being a photographer, I'm never not being a storyteller, and that's something I would say in like my little inspirational speech, is to really, like whatever it is that you do, or whatever it is that you're part of, and to, to never not be doing it. There's no reason, you know, to be distracted. Um, so I also, I've been able, to photograph a lot of really interesting people, thankfully, in, in my career. And, and I still get really interesting celebrity assignments, although it used to be a little more like you and that person, and now it's like you and that person and their publicist and their team and their et cetera, and you have a few minutes, but you still you know, manage to get it. That's you know, Dennis Hopper. Um, this is a photograph of mine, this woman, Charlotte Delal. It ended up on the cover, I shot it for Vogue, but it ended up on the cover of PDN, which is the, it's like if you're a photographer, it's your, holy grail of like nerdy, wonderful photography only, like photographer only magazines, and, and ended up on the cover, and that was one of those days in my life where I was like, I'm on the cover of PDF. <laughs> um, we all know who he is. <laughs> you know, so this is another, we had a really nice day at my house, because we had no budget, and so he just came to my house. We took pictures all day. It was really fun. He likes my tea that I serve. That's good. <laughs> Another good one, I photographed him the day before my birthday uh, a few years ago, and I was like, you're my birthday present. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I got for my birthday that year. <laughs> Hanging out with Mark Ruffle on the beach all day. Um, so I wanted to show you guys, I've made a, a few books, and the books that I've made were really the reaction to 
my editorial life, my, you know, my work not coming, not expecting my creative soul to be fed from my actual work. And for my work, you know, that is for me, started to, I started making these books. And this is a book that I made. It's all um, photographs of flowers. And so I know it's sort of like, in a way, you can see like, oh, you're photographing these wrappers, and then you're photographing these cheerleaders, and now you're photographing flowers. But I do feel like there's a real consistency through everything, because it all does come down to intimacy and um, really it's the feeling that you're you know, conveying or what it is that you're thinking about or what it is that you're meditating on. Um, this book was a printed risograph, a two-color risograph, it's kind of technical. If you want to ask me about it later, I'll tell you. Um, but it was just a, it was a meditation on a time in my life and something I was going through and, and it really helped me to make this book. Um, I have another, this is another book, it's called A Catalog of Constant Motion, and it's, um, I used to use Polaroid constantly. Of course, I don't really use Polaroid anymore, rest in peace Polaroid. Um, but I have, I have thousands of Polaroids, and I worked with this publisher in Venice, Italy, and we made a book of all of the sort of ten years of my life, and I, it really, it was a wonderful thing to put together. You know, and then this is my latest book, which is about Chez Panisse, which is another thing. I, I made this film Echo Park. You'll see the trailer at the end of this. And um, Echo Park was really difficult. Yeah, I've never made a film before. I, you know, we had a very tiny budget. We did it very quickly. I learned a lot of lessons. And it was wonderful. It has changed the tra trajectory of my life. But after I made the film, I really wanted something grounding and, and to know where it was that I came from. And I come from the Bay Area, and I am a photographer, you know? And so I knew Chez Panisse, I had done some assignments there, they had hired me for certain things, and I just asked them if I could start spending time there and taking pictures, thinking I would make a book. And, and so in the end, this is what came of it. And I would just go there for like three days every season and, and just hang out and try to stay out of the way and eat as much food as I could <laughs> and, and, and photograph the staff and photograph their farm. And, and it was something that ended up being really good for me. And then, but I also got to make this book that I'm really proud of and that Chez Panisse loves. And then we, um, all the proceeds of the book go to the Edible Schoolyard, which is a foundation Alice Waters started. Because again, it wasn't something I was doing to, you know, I, I can shoot advertising to make money. It was, it was really something I was just doing because I, I needed to do it to, to you know, feel good. Um, they have the most, they have the best looking staff. <laughs> it's ridiculous. But they just eat nice food and like, are, they're all good to each other all day. They're pretty happy people. Um, those are Kishu oranges that you get only in the winter for like three weeks and they're the best candy. And I'm like somebody who like, could eat a whole box of those donuts, but these are better. <laughs> Um, and this is, um, how's my time? Okay, good. Okay, so this is, I, I also, when I transitioned out of shooting Polaroids constantly, I, I have a Contax T3, it's a little point and shoot film camera, it's in my bag right now, it's with me everywhere. And I, and I it was, became important to me to always have a camera on me because when your creative life and your work life are the same thing, you can get sort of um, disillusioned, or you can get tired, or you can be like, I don't want to have a camera on me. I was, I was on a shoot all day. But then you go you know, out, and the sun is setting, and it's gorgeous, and you, you can't help yourself. You have to take a picture, or like you see a moment. So having, figuring out what it was that I needed to have on me to be able to sort of separate. Like I use a camera for my personal work that I don't use on set. And, and they, it's a nice sort of way of separating those things. And uh, this is Mamie Gummer, who is the star of my film. But this is her in her apartment in New York, which I really love. She's hiding a cigarette. <laughs> um, and uh, this is in Paris. This is actually the day after those attacks. Last year, we were there for a book fair. And we were just wandering around Paris, not knowing what to do with ourselves. Um, that's my friend Claire Bouvier. Like, I shot her, and then this is after the shoot, as we were hanging out, you know? Um, the poppies last year, two years ago. Those are gonna bloom again this year. You guys should all go out there. It's my boyfriend in Paris. Road trips through the Midwest. 
That's actually Hong Kong. You know. <laughs> so, this is the set of Echo Park. We, this is on the LA River, and this is what I'm going to end with. And I hope there's been some sort of consistency in my babbling up here. But what I really, you know, now I really am a director, and it's the most wonderful, empowering, and extraordinary thing that's happened to me, and I'm so happy to be able to tell stories in this new and challenging way, and I'm really happy to be supported by the people that I have met, and who, you know, are giving me a chance, like Ava DuVernay, who distributed my film, and then who has also hired me to direct an episode of her show, so now I get to direct television, which is just an impossible nut to crack, especially as a female director in this world. So this is the set of Echo Park, and here we are in this record store, an Echo Park that is no longer that record store, but it's amazing how quickly things change and how when you make something, it's also a document of a time, which is another important thing, I think. Okay, okay so this is the trailer for Echo Park, which I'm gonna show you guys, and then you can ask me any questions you wanna ask me. So I think I'm gonna some way. Wow. When did Echo Park become so hip and happening? The only time you moved here? Ouch. That's a low blow, my friend. So I'm meeting this woman who wants to buy my couch. Hi. Hi. Tell me why you moved to this neighborhood, Sophie. A bad breakup. That's why I moved. Do you want to come to this record shop with me? Um... You think I'm asking you out? No. I wasn't asking you out. Okay. <laughs> but if I was asking you out, I'm leaving in a few weeks' time, so it's kind of a no-risk situation. I don't think there's such a thing. You any good? God, I'm amazing. Are you good? <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> I haven't grinned over a girl since I was 12 years old. Why are you grinning right now? This is Alex. This is my he mother. He must be the new boyfriend. No, no I'm he's not, not my boyfriend. Of course he's not the new boyfriend. Your boyfriend is back in your house with the rest of your life. I just watched everyone around me get married, promoted by houses. But I just kept waking up every morning and I'm not wanting to do it anymore. Can the vacation or the crisis, whatever it is, just be over now? Can you come back to reality? Because this is not reality. Echo Park is not reality. I need something that's just mine. Have you ever been in love? Oh, I just have a hard time in relationships. You don't believe in it? Is it something you believe in? Or does it just happen? You keep asking yourself, am I happy? If the answer is yes, that is love.